Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is another impact analysis video. We're going to talk about lab-grown meat because I've seen the debate about lab-grown meat explode exponentially over these last few years and it's a perfect topic to talk about the environmental impact, the ethics, if it's even a solution, etc. So that's what I want to do today. Also, we're seeing a lot more companies invest in the technologies behind lab-grown meat. We have good food, we have masa meat, super meat, etc. Many, many more are leading the way in this industry. So let's look at the impact of that. But before we do so, this video is sponsored. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a long-term partner of mine that I have absolutely loved partnering up with. They've, they've taught me so many things. You guys. It's an online learning community with thousands of different courses where you can learn basically anything you want. My latest obsession is this cooking course about French vegan cheeses. I think it's so incredibly interesting. This is something that I've experimented with quite a lot already, so I think this is super interesting. And you know, we're talking about like more sustainable options for things that we already know. So I thought, hey, if I were to highlight a course right now that I'm really loving, it should definitely be this one. So you can find it down below if you want to check it out. And also if you look at the link down below and you click it and the first 1000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the impact. Very recently, and the reason why I was inspired to do this video in the first place is because I recently saw that a few weeks ago, the FDA approved lab-grown meat as safe for human consumption in the US, which means that we'll be seeing a lot more of it in our news feeds and as such, I thought this was pretty relevant to talk about today. First of all, a little practical run through. We started by calling lab grown meat vat meat, then we moved on to calling it lab grown meat, then we started calling it cultured meat, and now we're sort of ending up at calling it cultivated meat. But it's important to note that it all means the same thing. It's just that cultivated sounds a lot better in consumer ears than lab, which often means like synthetic, fake, etc. And a lot of marketing employees are really trying to sort of scale back on that notion. So it means the same thing. It's just with more or less marketing spin. I'm just going to call it lab grown meat because it's fast to say and it's easy for comprehension, etc. The reason why we're starting to see it more and more is because that both companies, consumers and investors are starting to see the problems that are arising with conventional agriculture and specifically factory farming. I actually have a whole video about the impact and history of factory farming if you want to check that out. If you want more details that I'm going to give in this video, there is another video just about that. So there's definitely enough information available. An average European citizen consumes about 80 kilos of meat in a year, most of which is produced with factory farming methods. And this industry has a huge impact on the planet, with over 70 billion livestock slaughtered every single year. For instance, it requires 1,800 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. The amount of resources that go into this thing is atrocious. And we use about 80% of our agricultural land for livestock or food for livestock, yet meat only accounts for about 20% of our consumed calories. So it's a really bad business looking at it from the planet's perspective. We are using tons of resources to produce very little of what we actually need. Now, I don't think this is realistic, but technically, if everybody on the planet went vegan or plant-based, we could reduce the agricultural space needed to produce food enough for the entire population from 4 billion hectares of land to just 1 billion hectare of land, which is pretty significant because it requires a lot less resources to produce plants than meat. Reducing the animal agriculture industry would also, in any extent that it is possible, be extremely beneficial to biodiversity, to natural areas, to air pollution and the lack thereof specifically. If we're going to reach our climate goals, it is important that people, consumers, especially in rich countries, because they do account for the vast majority of consumption, reduce their meat intake with at least 75%. As such, this has nothing to do with everyone going vegan or everyone doing the same thing, but we do need to reduce to some extent, all of us. A lot of companies, investors and consumers are finding it really interesting to look at ways where we can produce the same product that we like and that we love, but with less energy, less resources, overall. And this is exactly where lab-grown meat comes in, but how is it actually made? Cultivated meat is grown in vitro in anything from a test tube to a bioreactor 
As such, the meat grown in these tubes has never been an animal requiring resources to stay alive. Only the part we're eating is actually produced. The process of cultivating meat is borrowed from research into regenerative medicine. And in fact, Professor Mark Post from Maastricht University, who cultured the first burger in 2013, was previously working on repairing human heart tissue. So this technique is not new per se. We're simply using technologies we already apply in other fields of course with some adjusted elements. To culture meat, cells are required from an animal by biopsy. You don't need to kill the animal to perform the biopsy, it simply means that you take a small cell sample from that animal. Then it's placed in a warm sterile vessel with a solution called a growth medium, containing nutrients including salts, proteins and carbohydrates. And we'll come back to what that growth medium is made of in a second. One big difference between growing cells of meat in a lab and slaughtering an animal is that in cellular farming, you can't grow cups of meat with bone or skin or marbled fat. Muscle cells require different conditions and nutrients to fat cells, so they must be made separately. So when the fat and muscle cells are harvested, they are sort of like a formless paste. And this is exactly the reason why the first products are burgers and chicken nuggets, etc. Just like it's a lot easier to mimic those products with vegan ingredients because they're already really processed. The end result that is the nugget is very far away from its original form. And as such, it's a lot easier to mimic. The closer it is to its original form, the harder it becomes to mimic. But it's actually a really good thing that it's products like chicken nuggets and hamburgers that are the first products to be made with lab-grown meat because those products make up one third of the demand for meat products in general. However, the most prominent question right now is, is it sustainable? According to a study from Oxford University, lab-grown meat emits an average of 96% less emissions than meat from conventional methods. And depending on the products that's being compared, lab-grown meat also uses about 80 to 90% less water. Already there, there's a lot to be gained, but furthermore, the amount of animals that wouldn't have to be bred, kept and slaughtered would be reduced by a lot by a lot, a lot, if lab-grown meat became more widespread. A lot more farm space could potentially free up and it would also reduce the risk of outbreaks. Because in animal agriculture, and specifically in factory farming, we're using a lot of antibiotics, a lot of antibiotics. And as a result, we are risking that some bacteria become completely resistant to our antibiotics and that could potentially be catastrophic. And we have known about it for decades, but we have just expanded factory farming Anyway, some bacteria we could potentially be helpless against in the future, and that would be really, really bad. Theoretically, there's a lot of upsides to lab-grown meat, and many different types of life cycle assessments show similar results. I do think it is important to mention, however, that these theories, analysis, life cycle assessments, they all show that lab-grown meat is less impactful. However, as many experts also point out, we don't actually know how less impactful or how impactful in general these products are before they're mass produced, which they are not at this point. There are so many issues and impacts in a supply chain that is completely impossible to determine before the supply chain exists. But overall, it sure does look like we can save a lot of resources. One thing that is especially hard to account for is the energy use it requires to mass produce a product that is not yet being mass produced. But that also further just highlights that this industry would have to look into renewable energy a whole lot more than other sectors. I mean, like all sectors should be looking into it, but because the supply chain doesn't really exist, you get it. Now we have established that this product could potentially be very, very sustainable. So another prominent question is, whether or not it's ethical. And by ethical, I mean how far removed from actual animals is this thing? Like, would it be considered vegan or vegetarian? Well, obviously they're not growing hamburger cells out of thin air. <laughs> That's not what's happening. They are using cell samples and a biopsy from actual animals, but biopsies doesn't kill the animal and very rarely harms them. This might be a deal breaker to a lot of people, which is completely fair, absolutely fair. However, I don't think there's any point in denying that even if this product wouldn't be technically vegan or vegetarian, it would be an absolutely huge game changer in the impact of animal products overall. The sheer reduction of livestock that we would need to feed the population and the impact of those products, it would be an astronomical improvement, vegan or not, and that is the goal. Overall, the amount of animals we would potentially save from slaughter with cultivated meat is massive, but the production of cultivated meat does actually still involve animals. Until recently in order to kickstart the cell division, the growth of the meat that is, about 20% of the aforementioned growth medium had to be fetal bovine serum, which is drawn from the blood of a cow fetus. 
Not only is this serum incredibly expensive, which does slow down the overall process of making these products more widespread, it's also not vegetarian. However, alternatives are being developed. So in the future, we might be able to see lab-grown meat that is as close to vegan or vegetarian as possible. One technique that's being developed involves genetically modifying yeast to produce the proper nutrients and proteins. So we wouldn't need the cow fetus serum in the long haul. And this technology is called precision fermentation, which is quite similar to how medical insulin is made. So there are some flaws in the production, but overall there's a lot to be gained. Why isn't this more easily available then? The main reason, aside from the products needing more legislation in order to become widely available and the growth medium being really expensive, upscaling the production of lab-grown meat is really difficult. The cultured meat industry would need to produce a minimum of 15 million pounds of meat per year at a facility, which is sort of a rule of thumb for national distribution across both the US and Western Europe. This would require bioreactors that can contain over 200,000 liters, which has never been done in cell culture before. In Singapore, lab-grown meat is rather widespread, at least compared to the rest of the world, but right now the largest size the lab-grown meat is produced in is around 1,200 liters, which is very small relative to what is required for international consumption. The issues that arise with mass producing and upscaling the production is by far the biggest issue this industry is facing. When these things are sorted, the products will also become a lot more cheaper and we will also know exactly how impactful they are. But overall, there doesn't seem to be any doubt that lab-grown meat will have a smaller environmental impact than any type of conventionally produced meat product. Now, while I was researching for this video, I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any thoughts, concerns, or takes regarding lab-grown meat, and I got a lot of really cool and very different responses. So we're gonna go through some of the issues that I saw in my comments, and we're gonna talk a little bit about those. Some of them I've also already talked about simply by talking about the environmental impact, etc., and sort of how the products are made. But there are some other issues that I would really like to address in this context as well. First of all, and this is something that I saw quite a lot, but why would we innovate meat products when we can just eat plants? Why spend resources, time, energy, etc., making meat more sustainable when plants are already so much better for us, so much more available, so much more sustainable, etc.? Why would we do that? It could be argued that on paper it would be more sustainable for the entire world to just stop eating meat and also stop innovating lab-grown meat and just eat plants that would probably be more sustainable, but I cannot begin to imagine the amount of consequences and fallout and just other types of issues that scenario would create. It's incredibly unrealistic is what I'm trying to say, that everyone will just eat plants. That might never happen. It definitely won't. Now, I've been a vegan for five years, and while I think it's completely fair and incredibly sensible to simply reduce meat or cut it out and refuse it altogether and simply just eat plants, we cannot expect the entire world to do so, which is why we need other solutions as well. Overall, generally, and when it comes to any issue, including sustainability, there isn't one solution that will fix all our issues. We do need to look at the issues from several different angles at the same time, because people have different lives, behaviors, needs, etc., and we cannot expect everybody to be on board with the same solution. So we do need the other options as well. Meanwhile, looking solely at the environmental aspect of animal agriculture, producing smaller amounts of animal products won't have the same impact as mass production, as factory farming. As such, a reduction of the animal agriculture sector would solve a lot of global issues. Setting aside ethics from a solely environmental point of view, there isn't an issue letting a very limited number of animals, livestock, graze on a small farm. It, that, that's not the issue, that is, that is not the reason why we're in this mess. The meat consumption of poorer regions and indigenous people has never been the issue, is not the issue. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about before I end this analysis is related to purism and food. How many people, and especially members in the sustainability community, perceive lab-grown meat. One thing that I see often is that a lot of people are freaked out or sort of scared by the idea of food being artificial or synthetic because it's grown in a lab. 
There are a lot of health concerns related to whether food from a lab or lab-grown food is healthy at all. And while there's not really any point in denying that red meat is not healthy for the human body and meat in general isn't that healthy consumed in the quantities that many people in rich countries today are doing, we have tons of studies that show that that has a huge impact on the body. It's very detrimental to overconsume meat. I don't think there's any reason in denying that, but it's not because it's from a lab. <laughs> Both within the sustainability movement and outside of it as well, I often run into this purist school of thought when it comes to food. I also see it a lot with GMO, which I would love to talk about at another point, for sure. But many consumers seem to be freaked out by the idea of their food being grown in a lab. The discourse often runs something like, it's full of chemicals, it's artificial, it's bad for you, because it's grown in a lab. And it is grown in a lab. And there are many valid concerns as to why one wouldn't want to consume lab-grown meat, just like there are many valid concerns as to why one wouldn't want to eat any type of meat. And it can be like a texture thing or a flavor thing or an ethical thing, and it's all good. But the fact that it's grown in a lab really shouldn't be one of them. Actually, lab-grown meat might actually turn out to be a lot healthier for us because there's no risk of cross-contamination as we see all the time in factory farming. There's also no exposure to obscene amounts of antibiotics and nowhere near the same risks of being contaminated with E. coli or salmonella. Actually, a sterile environment might actually cause a lot less health concerns than a factory farm. Moreover, unless you grow all your own food and only eat the food that you can grow off of your own land, your food has been through a lab. That's just an integrate part of the global food system. Of course, we have mock meats and other types of vegan substitutes. They are also created in labs. But moreover, so are vegetables and fruit and the things that we know today as bananas and corn. Actually, we have been modifying and engineering our food since the beginning of agriculture. So the fact that our food has been through a lab doesn't make it dangerous. However, due to marketing, consumers often forget that there are many steps between and around harvesting produce and eating it. So many steps, so many people and companies that are working to optimize these products. And that does involve engineering, modifying, etc. And with that, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you would want to eat lab ground meat. If so, why? If not, why not? I, I would really love to hear your takes. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. That made my day. Please feel free to like and subscribe. That would also indeed, aha, make my day. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.